Hey guys, in this video we'll see how you can integrate Material UI version 5 with Next.js. Now some of you might know that Material UI had a major version upgrade and they moved from version 4 to version 5. And in that process, they deprecated their older library Material UI core and then moved to at MUI material. So before we start, just keep in mind that version 5 is a completely different library. If you're planning to start a new Next.js project which has Material UI, then the easiest thing that you can do is clone the example project that's present there in their official GitHub page. So here we are on the Next.js GitHub repo and under examples, you'll find a list of dozens of example projects around the most commonly used frameworks. So here in the project list, search for Material UI and open this folder which says with Material UI. Now this folder doesn't have the actual example code, but it will direct you to the link of the Material UI GitHub repo, which has the example for Next.js. Now here, if you open package.json, you'll see that it's using the latest version of MUI and Next.js. And if you just go back to the readme, they'll tell you what commands you need to run to clone this particular example and get started with the project. But if you already have an existing project in Next.js and you'd like to install Material UI, let's see how we can do that. So here we are in VS Code. And as you can see, I'm working on a Next.js application. Now I just started working on it and I wanted to use Material UI with it. If you see the package.json file, we haven't installed Material UI yet. So from here on, I'll tell you what to do step by step to integrate Material UI to your Next.js application. So the first thing that we need to do is to install all the dependencies that Material UI needs to work with it. So for that, you just need to copy the npm install command, which is there in the npm registry, or you can go to the official documentation of Material UI and find the command there. So as you can see here, the version 5 of Material UI also needs Emotion React and Emotion Style to be installed along with the main library. Let's go ahead and copy this command and install these three dependencies in our Next.js project. So here in our terminal, I'll just copy this command and hit enter. After installing, you'll be able to see the three dependencies that we just installed in our package.json file. As a next step, you want to change the underscore app.js file that's present under the pages directory of your Next.js application. As of now, underscore app.js is very basic and has the bare bones code needed to start your Next.js application. Now, what we want to do here is mimic the actual underscore app.js that is present within the material UI example for Next.js. So in this example project, we'll go under pages, open underscore app.js, and copy and paste this entire file into our underscore app.js. Now, why do we want to modify our underscore app.js? It's because we can use it to initialize all of our pages. So by just updating our underscore app file, we can inject additional data into all of our Next.js pages. And that's what this file is doing in this particular example. Here we are providing a theme and a cache to all of our pages in Next.js. After copying, you can save your changes. And if you notice on line number eight, there is an import from source create emotion cache, a certain file which is not yet present in our source code. So let's go ahead and also copy this file from our example project. So here we'll go to source, find this file create emotion cache. Now, as you can see, it's a very bare bone implementation of the cache functionality from the emotion library that we installed along with material UI. So let's go ahead and copy this. And we'll create a new file in our source folder by the same name for now and copy the contents here. Now, why do we need this emotion cache? You can just read the comments here and it'll explain why. So this function here allows developers to easily override MUI styles with other styling solutions like CSS modules. So when I started working on this project, I was actually using CSS modules to style all of my web pages, as you can see here. So if I want to still continue to use them, it'll be a good option for me to import this emotion cache. And in that case, I'll also have to set this prepend to false because as it says here, true will move the MUI styles to the top of the head. So they will be loaded first. If I don't want to load MUI styles, I'll have to set this to false. So here's a little thing that you'll need to remember whether you plan on using your CSS modules or MUI styles, it's up to you to set this value to true or false. Now coming back to our underscore app.js, let's see what all changes came here. So on line number 11, we're instantiating the emotion cache and this client side cache will be shared for the whole session of the user in the browser. So it will stay active throughout. Now in our main my app function, not a lot of things have changed. 
if you notice the main line here is still the line number 24 where you're rendering your main component so let me just roll back the changes and you'll see that previously only this one particular component rendering line was there now in our new app.js all we're doing is that we are wrapping our component with a cache provider and a theme provider and here if you see we are passing the theme that we imported from source theme now this file is again not present so let's go ahead and copy this from the repo so we'll go to source open theme.js and this theme.js file is doing nothing but creating the basic MUI style theme where in this example they're just changing the primary secondary and the error colors now it's not necessary to provide a custom theme but if you want to change a few things around you should be definitely creating one and adding it in your underscore app.js file. So just to get started with things, we'll just copy the same example and create a new file in our source called theme.js and copy the contents there. So both our cache provider and theme provider have their respective files ready. And we're basically done with all the changes that were needed here. Now what you want to do next is create an underscore document.js file under your pages section itself of your Next.js application. And the contents of it, again, we'll copy from the example that we are referring to. So we'll go to pages underscore document.js and copy this entire file. And we'll paste the contents here in our document file. Now by default, Next.js will always create a document page for you. But if you want to augment your HTML and body tags of your particular application, you can use a custom document page. And that's why in our example, we're giving custom HTML head and body tags. After copying the custom document, we're basically done with every single change we needed to do. And now let's just go ahead and create a component using Material UI. Right now I'm on the official documentation of Material UI. I just want to create a basic app bar for my Next.js application page. So I'll just copy the code that these guys have provided in the example and add it to my Next.js page. Now I'm done copying the imports. I'll just go ahead and copy the actual material UI component. Now let's start a server and it's up on port 3000. So let's open this. So as you can see, we have the app bar that we had just copied as an example from the material UI official documentation into our Next.js application. And from this point onward, I can use the other features that are available to improve my website. So this was basically it regarding how you can integrate Material UI with your Next.js application. I'll leave the link to the official repo of Material UI along with the links to the other important documentation. And I'll also upload this project which I'm currently working on and share its link in the description down below. So if you feel if this video helped you guys in any way, please leave a like and leave in the comments what other videos you'd like to see around Next.js. And subscribe to this channel for more such content. That's all I had. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.